welcome back everyone uh, good morning and welcome to the next lecture on energy conservation and waste heat recovery so if you recall we are continue will continue today our discussions on direct conversion of thermal energy to electrical energy if you recall in the last few lectures we learnt about thermoelectric generators as the first kind uh, of device which enables us to convert thermal energy directly to electrical energy we do not need any mechanical any intermediate mechanical energy conversion in between like in power plants we do not need moving parts or turbo machinery uh, for example pumps and turbines uh, neither do we need boiling uh, any working fluid like water or organic rank in uh, or organic fluids and so on. Uh, so what we will do is today we will learn another device or another technique by which we can convert thermal energy directly to electrical energy and that is called magneto hydrodynamics or MHD ok. So, what is magneto hydrodynamics? So, let us recall from our physics um, it is a Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what Faraday said is if a conductor and a magnetic field move relative to each other an electric voltage is induced in the conductor ok fair enough. So, if you have an electric field if you have a magnetic field that is sorry and if you have a conductor and the conductor actually moves within the magnetic field or the magnetic field moves relative to the conductor it can be either way ok. Then what happens is we can give rise to an electric voltage that is induced in that conductor ok. So, this we know and this is actually the principle on which magneto hydrodynamics operates. What does it do? we in magneto hydrodynamics we already have a strong magnetic field that is there that is present ok. And this is shown over here where I am showing these two solenoids this is a magnetic field ok. So, let us look at this configuration we are actually having a duct through which a gas is flowing ok. And on one hand perpendicular uh, to the flow of this gas we have a magnetic field that is operating ok. So, that is what the magnetic field direction is shown here denoted by B ok very nice. So, then what happens now what did we say we need to have a magnetic field and we need to have a conductor and the two, two should be moving relative to each other. So, where do we get the conductor now? So, that is the crux of magneto hydrodynamics what it says is says is if we have a hot ionized gas ok that moves at a high temperature heated to a high temperature then we can have this as a moving conductor. Now, how do we, how, how does a gas become conductor is your next question ok. So, it can be shown that if an ionized gas ok is heated to a very high temperature and when I say high temp very high temperature I am talking about temperatures close to 3000 degree centigrade ok. So, if you actually heat up a gas to, to that high a temperature then the valence electrons can move to because of their high temperature can move to the higher quantized orbits. And then ultimately at certain energy levels they can fly off ok they can fly off from their outer orbitals as and become free electrons and thereby the gas becomes ionized and becomes conducting ok. So, again I repeat that it is possible to ionize a gas by heating it subjecting it to very high temperature and when you do that what happens is some of the valence electrons of these excited atoms they move to the high to higher quantized states and ultimately reach a stage where they can break free and become free electrons. So, when the electrons leave what happens the gas molecules become ionized. So, you have an ionized gas which is flowing at a high velocity ok. So, that is what is happening over here you have hot ionized gas hot means very hot flowing in this direction ok perpendicular to the magnetic field that is operated or that is uh, imposed. So, what do we have do we have a conductor that is moving we would have a conductor yes we have the ionized gas which is moving and it has become a conductor by means of you know by means of 
having some electrons being released from it and do we have a magnetic field yes we do are they perpendicular to each other yes is the conductor moving relative to the magnetic field yes so we have all these conditions that are satisfied and so therefore we will have if we apply some electrodes on the third direction which is at that you know at the ceiling and at the floor of this duct if we may call it so which is denoted by these segmented electrodes as you can see here and if we now measure the voltage across this we are going to measure a finite voltage okay it will be a dc voltage like in thermoelectric generators we are going to give rise to a dc electric source okay so this is the basic principle working principle of mag magneto hydrodynamics okay we have an external magnetic field applied on a duct through which a hot ionized gas is flowing at very high temperature okay because it is ionized it is a conductor it's a moving conductor and therefore due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction we are going to have an electric voltage in the third direction clear so now how does this help us with respect to waste heat recovery clear now a normal gas would require very high temperature to reach this ionization potential very high okay which is not physically attainable so but however what you can do is if we can seed we can put a few small fraction of um, some materials for example cesium or potassium which are alkaline or metallic and if we seed the hot gas with these particles with the seeding particles then what happens is this ionization can take place at lower temperatures of the order of 3000 degree centigrade or lower and we can get adequate electrical conductivity of around 10 mo per meter remember electrical conductivity unit is mo per meter so about 10 mo per meter can be realized it has been shown that if you take typically we talk about combustion gases here and if you seed it with a small fraction a few percentage of uh, by, by mass um, a few percent of these alkaline materials particles then we are able to achieve an appreciable amount of electrical conductivity so the previous slide also had a graph where you can see the gas conductivity versus ionization so if the ionization percentage i am talking about just one percent here so if the maximum conductivity that you can achieve is denoted in the y axis by 100 percent what we are see is 90 percent is achieved by only one percent seeding okay so it is a very small amount of seed particles that we require but these seed particles by the way let me I will repeat it again but these seed particles are not uh, very benign they are hazardous so it is very important to capture these seed particles from the ionized gas once you have once we have extracted the electrical energy out of it clear so this is how an MHD generator works so let me write down here again just the name magneto hydrodynamic generator okay hydrodynamic let me write it with capitals so that is why it is called MHD so MHD generator what does it need it needs hot gas at high temperature seeded with let us say cesium uh, I would say less than 1 percent or potassium okay we need an external magnetic field okay and this gas has to be moved okay so at high velocity so this is typically act, uh, achieved as as we showed in the first uh, diagram through uh, a duct and which has an acceleration nozzle so it's from your fluid mechanics um, knowledge you would know that uh, through a converging section if you make it flow then you attain high velocities for the same volume flow rate 
and uh, this is how we give rise to this moving conductor okay which give rise to the electric uh, voltage okay now how are we going to use this let us think of how are we going to use this, where are we going to use it in terms of uh, in terms of electrical power generation. So, one of the ways that we are going to do is the following. So, remember how are we going to use it, let us write let us write it down, how are we going to use MHD in power plants. let us write it here. See uh, today the modern with, with uh, advances in material science the modern furnaces can easily reach and withstand temperatures in the excess of 3000 degree centigrade, it is not very difficult. Okay. But on the other hand if you think of our turbines the steam turbines or gas uh, forget gas turbines let us think of our steam turbines we are limited by our metallurgical constraints um, and reliability constraints and so on and other parameters we are typically limited to around 850 maybe 900 thousand degree centigrade okay so as a result of this restriction we have to restrict the temperature of the combustion gases that we have okay let's say in a natural gas based on in a in a furnace in a power plant yeah. So, that is the problem. So, now the so the way that we are going to do is let us say that if we have the combustion gases initially at a very high temperature 2500 degree centigrade, 2700 degree centigrade and so on and my blast furnace is my blast furnace where I am burning this fuel where I am where this combustion is taking place can withstand that kind of temperature. So, not a problem. So, if such a case happens then what do I do? I have this hot combustion gases coming up coming out at this high temperature. So, first before it is used in the boiler as a heat source I will make it flow through an MHD duct and extract some of the electrical energy out of it and then once it has cooled down I will let it go through the boiler and where it will be used to heat up the water clear. So, that is what I am going to do. So, let me write out write down what I just said modern furnaces can withstand temperatures around 3000 degree centigrade whereas, turbines inlet temperature is restricted to less than 1000 degree centigrade. So, the point is use combustion gases after seeding that is in an MHD duct first and use it subsequently MHD duct okay, let me to generate electricity and subsequently use it in boiler clear. So, the next question that you will ask is okay, what is my maximum temperature. So, for magneto hydrodynamics the temperature that I am talking about is around 3000 degree centigrade and you can say well my ambient is at 30 degree centigrade. So, I have a huge temperature gradient 270. Okay. So, if I can use you know 3000 degrees to 30 degrees if I can cool it down and all this while I use MHD to generate electricity 
my Carnot efficiency is going to be very high of the order of 90 percent. If you, if you calculate 2700 over 3000, even if you take Kelvin, okay. okay. So, the Carnot efficiency is going to be very high, close to 90 percent. So, 2700 out of 3300. Okay. So, I can potentially, even if I can operate at a decent efficiency level, I can extract a lot of energy, electrical energy out of these combustion gases. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we, uh, not all the good things come together. Uh, what happens is the ionization potential of the gas goes down as the temperature comes below 2000 K. Okay. So, that is what I am showing here. At T less than 2000 K, the electrons combine with the ions to form neutral atoms and the electrical conductivity becomes very low. Okay. So, unfortunately you cannot use it across a temperature range of 3000 to 30 or to ambient. Okay. Once we reach around 2000 Kelvin, we are uh, the MHD output is restricted, but nevertheless, okay. so why not use it for the range that we have. So, if I think about it, let us consider, I uh, will just draw a schematic here. It, um, Let us consider a situation where I have an MHD duct. And then this goes like this. And I have hot gases coming in. Okay. So, what do I need for combustion? I definitely need air. I need fuel. So, these two are required. And then I would also need, because I am talking about MHD, I would also need seed particles or the seeding gas. Clear? So, now then I have an MHD duct through which I am letting this flow. So, this is at 3000 degree centigrade and next when it comes out, it has already generated some electricity. So, I kind of trap that electricity from here. I put a magnetic field by the way that I should uh, first also denote over here by this green dot. So, this is magnetic field and I am able to get electrical energy. right? So, again mark my words this is uh, this is DC. So, the electric current produced is DC and therefore, what we need is we would need an inverter okay, to convert it to AC. and this will give me my AC output. Okay, so, by this time the gas has cooled down and then what I can have is I can have my regular uh, boiler phases which is economizer then the boiler And then the superheater. Okay, so I have economizer. Then I have the evaporator, and then I have the superheater. Okay, so this is where now the gas will flow. Okay, and slowly it is going to lose temperature as it flows through this various parameter, very various. Uh, sections of the boiler. First, it uh, when it is hottest, it goes to the superheater, then the evaporator, then the economizer. And finally, what do we get? This is my steam that goes to my steam turbine, and from there also I get 
electricity clear what i can also do is i can this air that i have drawn can also be made to pass through this maybe one stage here and sorry one stage here okay so the air can also as it comes can be preheated before it enters the combustion chamber so i would say air preheater let me write it down aph is air preheater this one i think we know economizer evaporator and superheater clear and this gas is coming from somewhere we, uh, this air is coming from somewhere probably from a compressor etc but we can use it to heat it up further preheating maybe prime two stages okay then finally last but not the least very very important is seed capture okay so whereby the seed particles will be captured and sent back very very important because as i said the seed particles are hazardous so we cannot let it be there we must have some kind of a mechanism to capture and recover the seed particles which typically can be done in inside an electrostatic precipitator like esp and so finally the exhaust gases that come out are devoid of the seed particles okay so once again i think uh, the quality of this diagram is a bit crude but i hope as i drew you understood what i was trying to do what i what we are trying to do here trying to show an application where you have an mhd duct you have this combustible gases you have combustion taking place in the combustion chamber and you have the combustible gases at very high temperature we have apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the paper and the hot ionized gases which are seeded is now moving in the from my left to right in the x direction and so therefore if i measure the voltage across the y direction i am going to get a dc voltage which i have to use an inverter to convert it to ac all right so by this time the magneto hydrodynamic flow has already been used to generate electricity the gas temperature has probably fallen down to around 2000 kelvin or less and now it is no longer useful for magneto hydrodynamic uh, generation so therefore what we will do is now the gas is going to perform its normal function as a heat source in a boiler as well as for air preheating and that is what it is done this is air preheating which is shown by the black line circuit and the green line circuit is the uh, is the boiler economizer evaporator and superheater okay and then okay this one is coming from the feed water pumps as we know from pump so i am not drawing that whole circuit i think by this time we all know how a rankin cycle or a steam turbine cycle looks like so that is how the combustion gases are used right now for its normal function but finally before release to the atmosphere it is extremely important that the seed particles are captured because the seed particles are going to be the especially if it goes to the atmosphere it is going to convert to oxides and hydro hydroxides and which can cause severe air pollution so therefore it is not at all possible to let it go in the environment so the seed particles have to be captured and then they can be sent back for to the mag mhd duct okay so that is what i am showing here again the current produced over here is dc keep that in mind so we need an inverter for conversion to ac and the seeding elements 
must be uh, captured because otherwise it can cause severe air pollution. So, the electrostatic precipitator can be a device which can help recover the seed for reuse ok. So, that kind of brings us to the end of magneto hydrodynamics it was a small short module by which uh, where we learned this we started by looking at how what is magneto hydrodynamics ok. It goes for it is it is based on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic radiation by which we uh, if you have an electric sorry if you have a moving conductor and a magnetic field ok next to each other perpendicular to each other then in the third direction an electric voltage can be uh, can be sensed ok and this voltage is going to be DC. So, the way we are going to do that moving conductor the way we accomplish a moving conductor is by ionizing the hot combustion gases or by ionizing gases um, because when it is subjected to very high temperature some of the electrons have enough energy to fly out. But that high temperature is very high, but if you seat that gas with a little bit of cesium or potassium or a metal or alkaline wave then what happens is that very low concentrations of seeding also this temperature where it can get ionized is brought down to below 3000 degree centigrade which is the temperature that our modern furnaces can withstand. So, we said that in the modern furnace the combustion gases can go up to 3000 degree centigrade, but however the turbine inlet temperature uh, is restricted to less than 1000 degrees because of metallurgical constraints. So, therefore, what we will do is we will let this combustion gases reach that high temperature and use that ionized gas to generate some additional electricity by using magneto hydrodynamics by using magneto hydrodynamics or using an MHT generator. So, thereafter once the gas has cooled down to below 2000 Kelvin which is where it loses its ionization potential let us use that gas now which is still hot enough to be used as a heat source for the boiler and for air preheating which is what we showed through that schematic that we drew ok. It is important to note that the voltage that is generated is DC. So, we have to convert it to AC through an inverter and also the seeding particles can be hazardous if let out in the environment. So, must be captured and reused ok. We will end with a small note many people ask that is this waste heat recovery because this we are not really using a source of waste energy. The way that I counter this is my thought again and not necessary that everybody has to agree is look we can go to temperatures of 3000 degree centigrade or higher given the modern technologies that we have in furnaces, but somehow we are unable to we are not doing that because of some other constraints somewhere else in this case turbines. So, we can go and have we can go to 3000, but we are not doing that. So, that way we are not utilizing a potential source of energy ok. So, in that sense it is wasted and magneto hydrodynamics shows us a way by which that energy which we otherwise we would not have utilized can now be utilized for generation of some additional electricity ok. All right. So, with that parting note we will end this uh, module this so we will end this lecture on magneto hydrodynamics. In the next lecture we will look into some another additional form of or another additional technique of direct conversion of thermal energy to electrical energy which is called thermo ionic generation. Thank you very much and we will see you in the next class.